So you're tired of symmetry being all about reflections and rotations, or the most boring of all, translations, which is just like putting stuff places. Putting stuff places, it's math. It's funny because putting stuff places is your English translation of the word translation. So to translate, translate, you meta-translate, just like how when you have data about data, that's metadata. Or in science, if you do a study on a set of study, it's a meta-study. Or if you dream that you're dreaming, it's dream Exception. Anyway, so you're really into this word metachirality, which you figure has got to mean like chirality that itself has chirality, because maybe that's the thing. But if chiral means something is not the same as its mirror image, what does it mean for something to be not the same as its mirror image in a not the same as its mirror image kind of way? I mean, in school, they made you learn about just four kinds of symmetry transformation thing. Reflection, rotation, good old translation, and everyone's least favorite symmetry, the glide reflection. Well, maybe they're not that bad, but you've always been a little suspicious of them, you know? Are they one thing? Or are they two things? How can you be both a reflection and a translation without being two things? Or is the whole point that putting stuff places all flippy-like is its own special thing? And then you wonder, why do you never hear about other combinations? So you try putting a reflection and a rotation together, which you name a reflectotation. And a reflectotation is definitely different from either a reflection or a rotation alone, although you notice the reflectotation looks an awful lot like a glide reflection, which is interesting because, ooh, you can make a diagram. See, there's reflections and rotations and translations, and we can make sure we get all combinations, like a glide reflection is a reflection translation, and between reflection and rotation is our reflection rotation, which is a glide reflection. Or maybe a glide reflection is a reflectotation? Anyway, they're the same. So what about a glide rotation? It can't just be another one that's the same as glide reflection because it never flips. Both feet are the same chirality. But it looks, well, you think maybe you could get that with just one rotation from a different spot? Yeah, so the glide's not doing much for you except moving the rotation point. And what do you get when you translate, reflect, and rotate? Just another glide reflection? Well, you guess there's just only one way to put stuff places all flippy-like, so unfortunately those combinations don't get you anything new. It's just four kinds of thing, whatever you call them. And what you want is a new kind of transformation that will put some chirality in your chirality. Of course, this assumes it's always true that these combinations get you a rotation or glide reflection. It certainly seems like a rotation plus translation will always just move the rotation point around on the plane. It seems like you can take any two left feet anywhere on the plane and there will be a single rotation between them. Anywhere on the plane. Unless... What if you're not on the plane? What if we travel into the third dimension? But wait, says two-dimensional you, isn't the third dimension time? Maybe sometimes, but we'll make time for time another time. Anyway, so you take your thing and rotated thing, and instead of translating it along the plane, you bring it out into the third dimension! Well, that wasn't very dramatic. And now we have to get it to stay there. There you go, and why not do it again, and again and again until it comes back around, and seen from the top, it's like if it were flat, it would have 72 degree rotational symmetry, but in 3D, it doesn't. It's like a spiral staircase that climbs itself, because it's feet. Um, anyway, so you decide to keep adding to it because it's turning into a spirally sort of thing. And you like spirals. You were born to like spirals. It's in your DNA. And you like it because this 3D glide rotation is definitely not one of the old four kinds of transformation. It's something new. And it looks like an actual symmetry that every time you transform this whole thing by 72 degree rotation plus a little translation, it stays the same. Well, if you pretend it's infinite. But infinity is totally your bestie, so you got this. So you're feeling pretty good about discovering this new kind of symmetry until you find out that not only does it already have a name, but you've even already discovered that name back when you were first forced to learn about symmetry in math class and said, screw symmetry. Screw symmetry, you know, that translating, rotating feeling like screwing a screw. Except to be a proper symmetry, it's an infinite screw. So when you do the translation and rotation thing, it doesn't go past its own edge or get to the end. It's spirally, like a spring. Or like that swirly pasta, but only if you pretend it's an infinite noodle, which it is coming out of the noodle machine before they cut it up to fit it in a box, right? And now that you think of it, there's a lot of spirally helix things out there. And unlike your foot staircase, most of them have this smooth, continuous symmetry. Like, you know, the barber pole effect? Which you figure happens because things with screw symmetry look the same if you turn it a little and move it forward a little at the same time, until you realize your drill bit isn't infinite. But anyway, if you only turn it without moving forwards, then under symmetry it's like it's moving backwards a little. You wonder if it would look like it were barber pulling the other way if you turn the drill bit around. And strangely enough, 
it still barber pole effects back towards the drill, and the symmetry still wants you to move forward and clockwise. It looks the same when turned around, which you notice is the case for a lot of these things, which means they have two-way rotational symmetry, which explains why, like, a nut turns clockwise onto a screw, but if you flip the nut over, then it still turns clockwise onto the screw. That's different from, like, if you have a clockwise pointing arrow and you flip it over, now it's a counterclockwise pointing arrow, or a thing turning in place looks clockwise from one side, and counterclockwise from the other. Even your helixy things that look a little different when turned around, like this swirly noodle which has a direction to its flappy bits, like petting a cat. But pasta! It still has clockwise screw symmetry, whether it's moving head first or tail first. Good kitty. Your springs, on the other hand, all have counterclockwise screw symmetry. You notice it's like the spiral of your spiral notebook, but that one's right-handed. They're like mirror images, kinda. Which reminds you of how when you have a chiral thing with 72 degree rotational symmetry to the right, the mirror image also has 72 degree rotational symmetry to the right, even though the reflection of the symmetry is a 72 degree rotation to the left. Or to look at it another way, if the original has symmetry 72 degrees to the right, it also has the mirror image symmetry of 72 degrees to the left, which is another way of saying it's the same symmetry. The figure might not be the same as its mirror image, left foot's turn to right foot's or whatever, but there's only one kind of 72 degree rotational symmetry because it's the same as its mirror image symmetry. Well, hold on now. Normal chiral rotational symmetry is the same symmetry as its mirror image? That sounds not very chiral. Wouldn't it be more chiral if a chiral symmetry were not the same as its mirror image? That sounds meta. That sounds meta-chiral. So you take another look at your spirally helix things. The screw symmetry has you move your screw a little bit forward with the right hand twist, but mirror screws don't let you move a bit forward with the right hand twist. You need to use forward and left. Well, that's not so complicated, right? One spirally foot thing has a right-handed 72 degree screw symmetry, and its mirror image doesn't have a right-handed 72 degree screw symmetry. The symmetry has its own chiral partner, a left-handed 72 degree screw symmetry. Yeah, some kinds of chiral symmetry come in chiral pairs. That's metachirality. You didn't even need the fourth dimension or some fancy crystal lattice. You've been eating metachirality all along. It's been in your candy canes and telephone cords and slinkies. Sure, maybe it's useful if you're trying to understand crystal lattices or want to know which way around space-time goes, but it's been all around you this whole time, but only now can you recognize the fundamental difference between a pasta kitty and spring fingers. It's this season's fashion. Okay, maybe it's time to end this video. Just gonna go do that. Okay, bye.